Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And hidden in plain sight is a potential issue that can make or break your flat field calibration. And today, we're going to be learning about it. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump on in and learn what that issue is and how to prevent making it yourself. In part two, I showed you this image right here. And I mentioned that there's something else going on with it and that I would show you in another video. Well, today I'm going to show you what happened in this image. Now, if you remember, this image was calibrated with a flat panel and the result is quite messy. So what exactly happened? Now, I took the same data set and I calibrated it using night sky flats, which is this image right here. And as we can see, the results are still less than acceptable. But the night sky flats definitely made it a little bit smoother. But the real question is, why did we get this result? Let's go ahead and exit out of these for just a moment. I'm going to go into File, Open, and I'm going to go to YouTube Example. And let's open up bad, flat, and light. Let's go ahead and give these two a quick stretch. And we have the night sky flat that was used to calibrate and the light frame that the night sky flat calibrated. Here's the issue hidden in plain sight. Let's go into process, all processes, and let's come down to Fitz header. Let's go ahead and select image one. Image one is going to be the night sky flat. Let's come down to our rotator. Here we can see that the mechanical position of the rotator was 292.5 degrees. Let's go to image two. Here we have 292.7999. The mechanical position of the rotator moved from the time that we took our night sky flats to the time that we took our lights. Now, if we go ahead and we compare the dates, we can see that these two images were taken the same date, just mere minutes apart from each other. So what happened? Why did the rotator move? Let's go ahead and exit out of these really quick. Let's go into File, Open, and let's go into Meridian. Let's go ahead and give these a quick stretch. And as we can see here, we have two images of M51 one on each side of the meridian. Let's go into process all processes and come down to Fitz header. We'll select image one and we can see the rotator is at 292.7999. Image two, the rotator is still at 292.7999. Now let's go ahead as we can see here, they're orientated differently, but let's go ahead into image, geometry, rotate 180 degrees. This now puts both images in the same orientation. Now if we blink through them, notice that. Notice the rotational difference here. Now that particular rotational difference isn't going to cause an issue. All that that is, is the image itself, the stars and the galaxy at a different rotation. The problem lies when your camera sensor, its orientation compared to the optical train varies between your flats and your light frames. In other words, if your camera sensor changes its rotation physically between your flats and your light frames, you can get an issue, just like we saw in that first image. In this particular case here, as we can see in Fitz header, 
the camera sensor angle, this 292.7999, did not change between both images. It's just the orientation of the stars. That piece doesn't matter, and that's where star alignment comes in in post-processing. So that leaves the question, what exactly happened? My normal routine would consist of setting everything up, doing my polar alignment, and then sometimes I'll either go over to a target, set my rotation, and then calibrate guiding, so on and so forth. Now, at the time that I was imaging M51 here, M51 was getting close to the meridian before I got started. So I would start off with slewing to M51, setting my rotation. And then what I would do is calibrate guiding, do an autofocus run, and then head off and do my flat frames. Then by the time I got to imaging M51, it would have already crossed over the meridian. At that point, when Nina plate solves, Nina would end up seeing the rotational difference. And in some cases, it puts us just outside the threshold that I have set or the tolerance that I have set for rotation. So if this slight little rotation put me just outside the one degree tolerance that I have set, Nina's gonna go ahead and try to adjust the rotation. And that leaves us with what you saw of about a 0.2 degree rotational difference. So how do we prevent that? My best suggestion would be once you set your rotation, leave it alone. Shut down your rotator, get rid of any rotational instructions or commands that you might have set in your image acquisition software. For example, with Nina, if you have slew, center, and rotate set for the start of your sequence, get rid of it. Put it as just slew and center. This gets rid of the rotation command, so if you run into an issue where you're crossing the meridian or something happens, anything where it could possibly bring you just outside your tolerance, Nina does not try to rotate. Again, you want your camera sensor to be in the exact orientation as compared to the optical train that it was in between flat frames and light frames. If the physical camera sensor rotation or orientation as compared to your optical train changes, you start getting issues. So let's go ahead and exit out of these really quick. And let's go to File, Open and let's head down to good flatten light. We'll give these a quick stretch and we have M51, we have our night sky flat. Let's check image one and we have 311.799 and then if we go to image two we have 311.799. So these are in the same rotation. And the data that was calibrated, if we go here, here we have a much better result. In fact, if we go into File, Open, let's go into my Here is the full data set calibrated with night sky flats. So that begs the question, could rotation be what's causing my flat panel to not calibrate well? Well, in some cases, it could. Like I mentioned in part one, not everyone experiences these issues. Now, if we were to go into my full master panel here, here's the same data set calibrated with a flat panel, and that flat panel 
was used with the same exact rotation, the same exact time that all of these frames were taken. And as you can see, it's still not that great of a result. If we blink through them, we have our night sky flat and we have our flat panel flat. We still have some weird anomalies going on where the flat panel just does not work. So the moral of this story is sometimes even a couple of tenths of a degree can make a huge difference. So once you set your rotation to take your flats or take your lights, do not touch the rotation and do not let your software touch it either. And if you have some strange issues going on, bring up a couple of frames, bring up a couple of flats, bring out a couple of lights and come down to Fitz header and check out the rotation angle. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you find this video useful? Have you found any rotational discrepancies in your data? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.